Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I wanted to show off a little bit of a concept that I've been working on, something I like to call the autoloader. And I don't know if you've been thinking about it, but like me, I like to build a lot of inertia and gravity-based weaponry. But the only problem is, it can be quite slow to reload. And that being a problem, it means that you're probably going to have to strike them within the first few rockets that you fired. Anyway, let's head aboard and I'll show you the autoloader. So we're going to head through the crew compartment here and into the rear hangar bay. And we'll finally get through to the actual autoloader room. So this is the autoloader room. I'll explain how this works. First off, over here we have the barrel itself. The barrel is propelled by two gravity generators. So any shell that's loaded in will shoot straight out there towards the target. Now we have the autoloader itself. So basically how this works is it's a rotor and a landing gear combined. So it grabs the shell, lifts it up into the roof and loads it into the chamber over here. And further on, we have the piston. Now the piston keeps each of these shells in line and keeps them in reach of the landing gear so we can continue to load shells. So you can actually extend this magazine as much as you want. You can extend it as far as you want and have as many pistons as you want. So you could have a hundred round magazine and constantly keep them loading. I've also been experimenting with a rotating carousel that rotates and load them, but I've not had as much luck with that. So that's why I'm showing you this one instead. So let's hop aboard and have a look at the controls. So first off, we have the rotor. So you can see the rotor comes up, loads it on over to the other side. We have the landing gear that locks the shell in place. We have the gravity generators that do the gravity and propel the torpedo forward. And then we have the piston itself. So you can see there, the piston's gonna put pressure on the shell to keep it in line. So let's fire our first round. So we're gonna load the first round over into the chamber. And once it reaches that position, we're able to fire it whenever we want with a click of the landing gear, like so. Now we can bring that back across. We can also go into third person just to see how that shell's gone. That's a quite slow one, but all these sort of shells that I've been making at the moment have just been for training purposes, just to make sure that the actually concept of the auto loader can actually work and it can feed these across. So now the landing gear can't pick up the next one without the piston giving it a little bit of assistance. So let's be ready on that. So once it becomes a breaching range, we simply clip that to close that, lock it in place and chamber the next round. So you could really imagine some sort of gunner down here loading these shells in manually. And for quite long range combat, this could be quite useful because these sort of shells have a lot of damage. We'll send the next one on its way and we'll return the loader back into position for the next one. We can also get a little bit fancy and speed up like so. We can get this into position next. And once it's in, we grab that, lock it and load it. So you could imagine a quite an efficient gunner, or you could even increase the speed of this arm if you really wanted to, to get a, high, a much higher rate of fire. But the next stage is making this really all automated. You can pretty much do this from a third person perspective if you're aiming. And it's as simple as locking, loading and firing. So we'll load the next shell. And all you'd have to do is wait for the landing gear to be in position. You can see how it's locked in the bottom position there and not crush it. Now watch what happens here. We don't want to crush it like that. So we need to be really careful at that stage. You can see how we're crushing it just a little bit, slight bit. We can lock that in place and we'll move that shell into the chamber. And once it's in the chamber, it's as simple as pressing two and it would be on its way. And there it goes. Now we're out of shells. We're gonna to have to return to the stacker truck and reload manually. So let's reset, first of all, our piston. So we're gonna go to there and load that back into position as well as resetting our landing gear. Now, as that's going on, we can get into our stacker truck and load some new shells. So this is the most efficient way I've actually found of loading shells at the moment. I've been trying some different sort of combinations of different things, but I've found that it's easy just to get a stacker truck out and move the shells manually rather than having some sort of elaborate feeding system. Uh, first of all, I had like a magazine that would drop the shell down, but the, the problem was that with that, so it was just it was just not particularly working 100% of the time and you need it to work 100% of the time for it to be effective but I've tested this out why the ship is moving and it works absolutely fine so I don't see why you couldn't manually load them back in with the stacker truck so we'll bring that over to there load the first shell in now these are the yellow shells so the yellow shells are the training ones and we'll put another one in there let that drop down into place and then we'll just release that now we need to disable our number three so we don't tilt back and fall over. 
and we'll move on to the next shell. So we'll just load two for this little moment, just so we can show you how the stacker truck is fun. It's so fun using a stacker truck and playing it like this. I just, I, I've got to make some sort of survival situation where we need a stacker truck to move crates um, and move up to there. It could even be a mini game, couldn't it? Like a little stacker truck mini game uh, where you've got to offload a ship or something. Oh, like you're giving me a look at loads of ideas now. Anyway, continue loading this. And we need to turn on this, so we're going to tilt forward. Lower it down, lower the shell into position. So even if I load these shells pretty unevenly, the actual piston will make up for that. So we're just going to unload this by dropping landing gear. And we're going to reverse back, put our handbrake on. And we're going to try firing these two shells. So first off, we need to get them in reach of the landing gear. So to do that, we then actually have to use the piston. So get the piston going like so. And you can see that there's a bit of a funky angle occurring here, so it might be a little bit harder than I first imagined. But once they start to push, the gravity is going to take over. And that's perfect. We'll lock that one in position, and we'll load that one into the chamber. So off it goes. And now these are training ones, so I think these ones go really slow, just so I could see which direction they actually went in. Yeah, they're the really slow ones. And move that back over here. And we'll finally chamber this next one. So we'll just move that a little bit up before the piston actually gets into position. And lock that in. And fire it. And that is, pr that is pretty much the idea of the auto loader. Now hopefully this has inspired you to kind of build some of your own sort of auto loader con concepts. I mean I've been trying a lot of different ideas to make gravity and inertia weapons a lot more effective. And sometimes it works out really well and the other times it's just it just doesn't work i mean the rockets and the missile pods are, are so much cheaper and so much effect more effective to actually build but it, it, in the reason of firepower literally one of these shells loaded with the correct amount of explosives can cause a hell of a lot more damage anyway guys thank you for watching and i'll see you next time